Being a journalist is about asking important questions, and I'm about to ask a question that I never anticipated asking in my career. What do you imagine Donald Trump smells like? Well, you don't actually have to guess, because the former president is now selling Victory 47 perfume for both men and women. According to the product description, each $99 bottle, which I tried very hard to get my hands on tonight, contains the, quote, signature scent of strength and success. A crisp opening of citrus blends into a cedar heart underpinned by a rich base of leather and amber, creating a commanding presence, end quote. With a discerning enough nose, you might also detect top notes of a cash grab by a man whose bill for half a billion dollars has come due. Monday is Trump's deadline to post the bond needed to delay enforcement of the $464 million fine from his New York civil fraud trial. If he doesn't find that money somewhere, the New York attorney general can begin seizing Trump's assets, including his Seven Springs golf course. As the deadline approaches, the former president is selling perfume and stocks, meme stocks almost. Today, Trump's media company approved a merger to take Truth Social public, and the attention has caused the valuation to balloon. The merger is expected to close as early as next week, and Trump's 60 percent stake in the company could be worth $3 billion. Now, if those inflated share prices hold for a while, could Trump use them to post his bond? I know just the person to ask. Joining me now is Neil Peterson, owner of the New York-based Peterson & Sons Surety Bond Agency. Neil, good to see you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having we me. We have been asking people who know about these things, these questions all week, because most of us know nothing about this, right? We have no idea how this world of, of bonds and surety works. Let's start with the basics. Donald Trump's got to do something on Monday, and he doesn't appear to be able to have done it. He doesn't appear to have, 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 uh, have gotten the bonds that he needs. What do you think is happening now and what happens on Monday? I think he's working diligently to obtain the bond. If he doesn't post it by Monday, I still think there's an uphill battle for uh, Letitia James to execute on the judgment and seize his assets. I don't think it's going to be as simple as, you know, going to 40 Wall Street and, and auctioning off as, as she has said to the press. So I think there's going to be accounts restrained, maybe some cash seized some bank accounts levied, and I think there's going to be a further proceeding to have them turned over to her, which is going to take some time. So what do you think can happen? He says, I can't raise the bond needed. Uh, she says, actually, you can because you don't have to have it done as one bond. M tell me what that means. The, in theory, you could post uh, bonds from a couple different surety companies to add up to the full value. That becomes a little messy because on the back end, you would need, let's say, if you use 10 companies, there would have to be some sort of agreement to... Who uh, gets what? What order they get it in? Yes. Yeah. So getting 10 companies to agree to anything is very difficult. Even if you had four or five, it's going to be it's going to be complicated. No one wants to agree to be the first person to pay. And the issue is, if you have to pay, meaning if the judgment goes against Donald Trump, uh, his appeal goes against him, and the, the bond company now has to pay the money, in exchange for that, in theory, you'd have taken assets worth more than what you have to pay up. So what's the problem? What's the risk to the bond company? So the real risk is that judgments, once they're affirmed on appeal, have to be paid within five to ten days. Right. If you pledge real estate, it's not liquid. You can't liquidate it quickly. Uh, that could take months to a year to do. To do a company doesn't want to lay out five hundred million dollars pending, you know, recouping about the same or more with interest and penalties uh, once the real estate's sold. The other aspect is that most real estate has a first or second position, so no one wants to come in as a second or third uh, creditor, right, on on the property. And then, lastly, if the former president gets reelected, a bond secured by an indemnification agreement. It's never been, a surety company has never had to execute on an indemnity against a sitting president. That is going to have challenges in itself. So bottom line is these surety companies are like, we got enough business. This is, this is too complicated for us. Correct. They're not very forward thinking companies. It's one of the oldest industries in the country. It's, uh, they're not, they're not uh, reinventing their underwriting cycle or right. process. They're taking select risks that are intelligent 
it's supposed to be a zero loss game. So if if you were good at this, if you knew how to handle real estate, big real estate in Manhattan, and you said, all right, you know what, you're probably going to lose your appeal. I'm probably going to be caused as the as the uh, the bond issuer to um, to pay up in short order. But I've got this building or I've got these assets. Would you do that for the discount that you could get? In other words, it's a zero loss game. Could there be a way that you can say, all right, Donald Trump, you got to put up a billion dollars worth of property to get a half a billion dollar bond? It's unlikely. I haven't seen the former president's financial statement, but we're also not able to secure minority interests in properties. So if he's a 15 percent owner, 30 uh, percent owner, how do you secure that? Right, because you then now you're negotiating with other people who make decisions about whether that property is going to be liquidated. Correct. And we also have a very difficult commercial real estate market. Office space is empty. Finding a value for those properties, whether or not the debt's going to be refinanced, are all major questions um, that go into the underwriting equation. Let me ask you about this uh, company, this uh, True Social merger that he's going into. In theory, that will net him some money. I have no idea how that works. How, In theory, he can't get that money for six months. But does, does that come into the negotiation that maybe the guy's going to come into a whole lot of money real soon? So it's definitely going to be a factor. But at the end of the day, again, if you can't pledge or secure an asset, a surety company is not going to take it. Right. I've dealt with a couple different um, special purpose acquisition companies. And if they can't pledge their stock or they have a very small float, it's not really attractive proposition because let's say you take a billion dollars in, in that stock and you have to sell a billion dollars, but the you know volume's ten million, you're going to completely crash the stock. So right. your, the value of your asset that you use to secure the bond has has diminished. So it's possible that Donald Trump might be trying to use that against getting the money, but it's not going to be from a surety company. It be, be, might be have to do it with other business partners or something. Correct. Probably either other business partners or some sort of specialty lender. Well, so the, there's been talk that as of Monday, Letitia James, in theory, can do something. She can go into a bank where he's got money, and can she actually get her hands on the money? So I'm not an expert in post-judgment execution, but I believe she's going to levy the bank accounts, and eventually that's going to be turned over to the sheriff or the marshal, and then eventually is going to be turned over to the state of New York to satisfy a portion of the judgment. It's probably also going to be some further court proceedings to do so. So it's not going to be immediate on Monday, maybe two or three th weeks. Well, how do you see this playing out? You seem to think that Donald Trump's got a plan. He's just trying to not execute on whatever plan it is because he'd like to just basically use someone else's money for this if possible. So I think he has a plan. I think at the end of the day, when he's backed into a corner and has to post the bond, I am confident that he's going to find a way. All right. Uh, Neil, good to see you. Thank you for this. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Neil Peterson me. is the owner of the New York-based Peterson & Sons Surety Bond Agency. Thanks for your time.